Welcome to the longest running, the original and the only trilingual Filipino Chinese lifestyle magazine show, Chinatown TV. I'm your host, Isa Chong. It is already the first Sunday of 2024. Time flies so incredibly fast. It feels like just yesterday we were ushering in the new year and now here we are, stepping into another exciting chapter. Kaya naman ginawa namin exciting and worth watching ang episode na ito for all of you. At para sa aming unang segment, join us on an inspiring journey with Miss Philippines Universe 2023, Michelle Marquez D, as she graces the prestigious Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Incorporated. Witness how this top 10 Miss Universe finalist celebrates her unique heritage through the theme Dugong Chino, Pusong Pinoy. Explore the fusion of cultures and the powerful message of unity and identity in this exclusive video. Don't miss out on the celebration of diversity and the showcase of Filipino-Chinese camaraderie with Michelle Marquez D, a symbol of beauty and bridge between worlds. so much for joining me here, for recognizing me in my endeavors at Miss Universe. Of course, I was so thrilled to receive the invite as I've always known my grandfather was the vice president here years back. And if there's one thing that I can say about the D family is that for whatever we've done, and this is consistent for all the Ds, whatever we do, we really aim to serve. We really aim to give back and do whatever we can to make sure that the Philippines becomes a better place, whether in our small or our big endeavors. Of course, we all know that during Miss Universe, during my whole campaign in El Salvador, it would not have been as impactful if my core purpose wasn't intact. And my sole purpose was to ensure na sobrang magiging proud ang lahat ng Pinoy. Everything that I did, I put Yung Pusong Pinoy integrated into my whole story, into my whole journey, whether it's small, like my wardrobe, or big, like my national costume, from the videos to the people that I touched, from you know the advocacy efforts that I did, it was all about trying to make the world a better place, the universe rather, a better place, but also to do my part, which is to utilize any platform that I've built to really create that positive impact around the world. To all of us watching, to all of those that are watching, I hope we can truly take some advice from my personal journey, which is to really walk with intention. Don't just walk, don't just talk, but walk the talk because your actions will always speak louder than words. And as long as you have the purest of intentions in whatever you do, you can never go wrong. Okay, I hope I trust in the universe, I trust in each of our timelines. And I always walk with a very grateful heart. And with that, I would truly like to thank the FFCC CII Chamber for recognizing my efforts. Maraming maraming salamat po. I'm so excited for all of the work that you're about to do. And of course, I am so proud to be representing the Chinoy community. Kitang kita naman po sa mata ko. And sa apelido ko that I'm very proud to be Chinoy. So again, thank you so much for being here and spending the morning with all of us and maraming maraming salamat for the recognition as well. Have a great day. You'll have more of Chinatown TV when we return. So don't switch that channel. Ipinahayag ni Pangulong Xi Jinping ang kahalagahan ng kapayapaan sa kanyang mensahe para sa bagong taon 2024. Pinigyan din niya ang diwa ng kooperasyon at ang pagtutulungan ng China kasama ang mundo upang makamit ang isang masaganang kinabukasan para sa sangkatauhan. 
naway maging mapayapa at matiwasay ang mundo ang kanyang pagwakas na hangad. Sa pagsalubong sa bagong taon 2024, nagbigay ng makabuluhang mensahe si Pangulong Xi Jinping sa isang pagtitipon na inorganisa na political advisory body ng China noong December 29. Binigyan diin niya ang pagsusumikap sa pagtataguyod ng dakilang adhikain ng pagpapalakas sa China at pagpapasigla sa bansang Chino sa lahat ng aspeto sa pumamagitan ng pagtahak sa landas ng makabagong China. Kasama rin niyang binati para sa bagong taon ang mga hindi kasapi sa Partido Komunista ng China, ang All China Federation of Industry and Commerce, mga personalidad na walang kinabibilang ang partido, lahat ng etnikong grupo sa China, mga kababayan sa Hong Kong, Macau at Taiwan, mga Chino sa ibang bansa at mga kaibigan mula sa buong mundo na sumusuporta sa pag-unlad ng modernisasyon ng China. Sa paggunita sa 130th anniversary ng kapanganakan ni Mao Zedong noong December 26, isang makasaysayang symposium ang idinao sa Beijing. Binigyan diin ni Pangulong Xi Jinping ang kahalagahan ng patuloy na papapaunlad ng mga simulain ni Mao at ang pagsusumikap na maging mas matatag ang China at muling pasiglahin ang bansa sa lahat ng larangan sa pamamagitan ng pagsusulong ng modernisasyon. Ayon kay C, ang kaisipang Mao Zedong ay isang mahalagang yaman para sa China at magiging gabay ng kanilang kilo sa mahabang panahon. At ang pinakamagandang paraan upang gumitain si Mao Zedong ay ang patuloy na pagabante sa mga adhikain na kanyang sinimulan. Nagsagawa ng mahalagang pagpupulong tungkol sa foreign affairs sa Beijing mula December 27 hanggang 28. Si Pangulong Xi Jinping ng China ay nagbigay ng isang mahalagang talumpati sa nasabing kumperensya. Sa kanyang talumpati, masusing pinalikan ni Xi ang makasaysayang mga tagumpay at mahalagang karanasan sa diplomasya ng isang malaking bansa na may katangi ang Chino sa bagong panahon. Tinalakay ang pandaigbigang kapaligiran at historikal na misyon ng China pagdating sa international environment. Noong December 29, nakipagkita si Pangulong Xi Jinping ng China sa Chinese Diplomatic Envoys to Foreign Countries na dumalo sa Beijing para sa taunang kumperensya ng Overseas Envoys. Tinuri ni Xi ang makabuluhang mga tagumpay ng diplomasyang Chino sa bagong panahon. Hinimok niya ang mga kinatawa na lubos na pag-aralan ng International Environment at Historic Commission ng China's Diplomatic Work para sa kaunlaran at kapayapaan. Noong January 1, nagpaabot ng kanyang pagbati para sa bagong taon si Shen Haixiong, presidente ng China Media Group o CMG, sa mga manonood sa buong mundo. Binanggit niya na ang taong 2024 ay ang taon ng Dragon sa kalendaryong Chino, na kumakatawan sa mabuting kapalaran at swerte bilang isang mitolohikal na totem ng sibilisasyong Chino. Sinasagisag nito ang diwa ng pagbubuklod ng lakas, pagkakaroon at kinabang sa lahat, Paghahanap ng pagkakaisa habang kinikilala ang pagkakaiba-iba at magkakasamang buhay at pagtitiwalaan ng lahat ng bagay. Sa diwa ng Dragon, nangako si Xia na ang CMG ay maghahatid pa ng maraming magagandang kwento tungkol sa China at sa mundo sa mga manonood sa buong daigdig upang lumikha ng mga bagong kabanata ng modernong sivilisasyon. Noong 2023, pinagdiwang ng China at Timog Africa ang 25th anniversary ng pagtatag ng kanilang diplomatic relations na itunturing na magkabilang panig bilang most dynamic bilateral relationships in the developing world. Upang ipagdiwang ang okasyong ito, inilunsad ng China Media Group o CMG at ng South African Broadcasting Corporation o SABC ang isang serye ng mga dokumentaryo na pinamagatang 25 years on sa Johannesburg. Welcome back. You're still watching Chinatown TV with me, your host, Isa Chong. China's rich cultural heritage spans over 5,000 years. At sinasabing isa ito sa pinakamatanda at complex cultures in the world. With its unique customs, traditions, and practices, China has a lot to offer to those who are interested in exploring its fascinating culture. As we delve into the vast and diverse culture of China, ating kikilalanin ang kanilang mayamang kultura na nagpasalin sa alin na sa mga henerasyon. From traditional Chinese medicine to the art of calligraphy, there is much to explore and learn about. Join us on our journey to uncover these fascinating aspects of Chinese culture and more as we delve deeper into the wonders of this ancient and diverse civilization. 
saksihan ng isang taong hindi pangkaraniwan at puno ng hamon. Ang 2023 ay taon ng kapayapaan at pagkakaisa, subalit din napuan din ng digmaan at alitan. Nagkaroon ng pag-unlad at progreso ang mga bansa, ngunit hindi rin nakaligtas sa mga suliranin at pagsubok. Iba't ibang desisyon na nagtuturo sa atin ng sari-saring landasin, ngunit isang paniniwala ang nag-uugnay sa ating mga pangarap. Ang mga mithiin ng mga Chino ay kapwa, dakila at payak. Ang masiguro na ang karaniwang tao ay magkaroon ng magandang buhay. Sa ating asul na planeta, ang ating kinabukasan ay magkaugnay, ang kagalingan ay magkakabit at ang tadhana ay magkasalo. Ngayong 2024, yakapin natin ang pag-asa ng kaligayahan, pagsamasamahin ang karunungan ng sangkatauhan at piliin ang ating komong kapalaran. Panuorin at sumali sa ating paglalakbay ng pagpili ng ating komong kapalaran sa espesyal na video na ito. Sana ay sunduin ako ng aking ama paglabas sa eskwela at makipaglaro siya sa akin ng mga video game. Sana'y samahan ako ni nanay sa pagtulog habang ikinakwento ang pulang kanyang isinula. Kaya amang katkat ang mga bulaklak ng kapayapaan sa asul na planetang mundo. Kapag nawalan na ng linaw ang tubig sa dagat, kapag hindi na naghahatid ng saya ang aming awit, ang babala sa aming buhay ay kailangan ng ipahiwati. Nakikiusap kami sa inyo, pinakamatalinong nilalang sa mundo, na huwag matakot sa bagyot kulo at habulin ang sinag ng araw sa gitna ng hangin. Huwag mangamba sa daluhong ng alon at sumakay sa bakunawa tungo sa kailaliban ng dada at likhain ang paraiso para sa lahat ng nilalang. Ang mga tao sa pagtuklas sa mga misteryo ng kanilang pinagbula noong nakaraang milenya ay siyang lumikha ng aking kasalukuyang estado. Sa loob ko'y hindi lamang mayroong modernong teknolohiya at malawak na datos, mayroon ding lakas ng pag-iisip na nakasandig sa likas na kalikasan ng tao. Ang likas na kalikasan ng tao ay kabutihan, kaya't ako'y nakatutok sa kabutihan. Ang walang hanggang pagkamalikhain ng tao kasama ng aking di matatawarang potensyal ay magtataguyod ng isang maliwanag na kinabukasan na hihigit sa imahinasyon. Kung may magtatanong, saan ako galing? Saan ako papunta? Nais ko silang sagutin hindi lamang sa pamamagitan ng mga imahe. Nais ko silang dalhin sa arbi ng sibilisasyon upang masulyapan nila ang aking uri ng pamumuhay at maunawaan ang aking nakaraan at kasalukuyan.
hindi tayo masisira ng karasan, tunggalian at kaguluhan dahil sa kaibutura ng ating mga puso ay nagliliyabang pag-asa. Ito ang liwanag na di nagmamaliw na pagkakaisa, pagkakaibigan at pagkakauluan na hindi maapula kailanman. Ang malalim na sansinukob, ang ikapat na kapaligiran para sa sangkatauan, ay puno ng misteryo at mga bagay na hindi pa nauunawaan na siyang labis na pumipilit sa imahinasyon. Hindi natin dapat ilapat sa sansinukob ang ating nalalaman. Ito ay hindi isang bagong arena para sa labanan. Ang ating tapang upang masiglang yakapi ng sansinukob ay nagmumula sa karunungan ng sangkatauan at sa walang kapares na kahangahangang pagkakaisa. na video na ito, dalhin namin kayo sa isang makabuluhang paglalakbay sa klasiko at makabagong kaisipan ng China na nagtataguyod ng pagiging inklusibo ng kabihas ng Chino. Maririnig natin ang himig na Erhu, ang isang instrumentong pang musika na nagpapahiwatig ng integrasyon ng silangan at kanluran noong panahon ng Silk Road. Aanyayahan ni Mahiyar Govati ang ating host, si Ms. Xiang Shu Chen, isang scholar sa Xi'an Branch Library ng China National Archives of Publications and Culture upang talakayin ang temang ito. Tuklasin ang kagandahan ng pagkakaiba-iba at kung paano nito hinubog ang isang sibilisasyon na tunay na inklusibo. Huwag palampasin ang video na ito. Isang pagsilip sa classics of Chinese thought at ang pagpapahalaga ng China sa the inclusiveness of Chinese civilization. The musical instrument I am playing now is called Arhu, which was introduced to China along the ancient Silk Road in Tan Dynasty. The Arhu is a testament to exchange and integration of Eastern and Western civilizations. Xi'an was once the ancient capital of China, the starting point of the Silk Road and the intersection of Eastern and Western cultures. Now as Belt and Road Initiative proposed by China gets more recognition worldwide, Xi'an is once again at the forefront of the international exchange, serving as an important window for China to connect to the world. Today, I will invite my new friend, Ms. Xian Xucheng, a scholar to Xi'an Branch Library of China National Archives of Publications and Culture to explore the topic of inclusiveness of Chinese civilization. So, how did you like what I just played? It was really beautiful. I really enjoyed listening to it. I think I heard some Chinese tunes in what you had just played. Yeah, I just started to learn this instrument. Although Arhu is not originated here in China, but uh, it was quite adapted and very well developed in Chinese culture. Yeah, um, exactly. I think the Hu team represents not only musical interactions, but also just broader cultural, civilizational interactions in general. Did you know that in Chinese culture, the idea of harmony is actually very important for, for music? Uh, of course. In traditional Chinese music, there's five notes, the gong, shang, jue, zhi, and yu. And then in traditional Chinese music theory, the idea is that you have to compose music in this harmonious way uh, to create a kind of complementarity or resonance between the different musical notes and that is how one achieves pleasant music and I think this very fact of um, thinking about music shows the importance of harmony for, for Chinese culture. In the discourses of Zheng there was a court historian of the Zhou dynasty called Shi Bo and he articulated one of the first theorizations about harmony. He was saying that um, harmony gives 
rise to all things, whereas if all things are the same and merely uniform, then things just die. Uh, what he meant by that is, you know, you have to have diversity for things to flourish and to grow. But if you just have the uniformity, things cannot possibly be sustained. And Shibo goes on to say that in this very beautiful passage, there is no music um, in a single note. Um, a single color cannot possibly be beautiful to look at. A single taste cannot possibly be delicious and um, a single thing cannot possibly be judged or evaluated. This notion of harmony, it reminds me of an orchestra. Everybody's playing the same piece, but on the music sheet, there are different parts for all of these instruments within the groups, different groups, and they play together and there is this conductor leading all of them all together in a harmonious way. Probably we can see it abstractly to other aspects of life and also governance. Yeah, I think that this idea of harmony often gets misunderstood because people think of it as eradicating your individuality such that you conform to a, a given, to a uniform standard, but that's really not the case. It's much more about asserting or accepting the fact of everybody's individuality or difference and then still trying to create a kind of coherence out of everybody's given individuality. So it's not at all about getting rid of individuality. We are in Xi'an which was known by Chan a long time ago. And also here it is the starting point of ancient Silk Road. A thousand years ago, people were coming here to Chan to do business, or spreading their own religious beliefs and teachings. And they were treated very warmly by Chinese people. How come that Chinese civilization could have such inclusivity so long ago? Yeah, I think the presence of many different people from early on in Chinese history was a great contributing factor to that inclusiveness. For example, the Silk Road uh, started around 200, 200 BC and lasted for over a thousand years. And on the Silk Road, many, many different things were exchanged, not only commodities, but even cultures and religious beliefs. And even within the Tang Dynasty itself, many foreigners came and so among them, people stayed for a long time and became officials in the imperial court. So thanks to this very inclusive environment, the lives of foreigners when they came to Chang'an were not really affected. Um, so they could follow their own traditional cultures and their own habits and customs. And this extended to religious beliefs as well. Speaking of religious beliefs, I've noticed that here they have a copy of Stelia Dachin or Nestorian Stelia, which I know is very famous in China. Yes, indeed, it is very famous. And the original is in Xi'an City. Dachin is the name that the ancient Chinese gave to the Eastern Roman Empire. And Nestorianism is the name of a Christian sect founded by the patriarch Nestorius and which spread in what we call today the Middle East. And in the ninth year of Zhengguan, there was a sect of uh, Nestorians who came to Chang'an and they were met with by the emperor at that time. And after learning about this religion, he sent an edict for the propagation of this faith because he thought that there was nothing inconsistent about these teachings with Chinese values. When you're really self-confident in yourself, can you be so embracing of all these different, different cultures? And the diversity of different cultures and perspectives also allows one to really understand one's own culture and therefore become confident in oneself as well. What is the impact of the inclusiveness of Chinese civilization from ancient time to the present on the development of China and today's world? I think the Chinese tradition can be characterized by humanism, which means that it sees uh, the differences between human beings in cultural terms. And this is quite different from the dominant tradition in a Western sense, which tends to see differences between humans in very innatist biological terms, or you could say racialized terms. So that is, the differences between people are in terms of race. And this is something that people can't change because you're, you're born like that. This is quite different from how China traditionally understood human differences.
So the Chinese understanding of difference and why difference is enriching is premised on its understanding of the organic world. Fundamentally, the Chinese worldview sees that it is only through exchange with different things that leads to flourishing. So the points that you mentioned, most of them are theoretically explaining how Chinese philosophy works, but how can we put them in practice yeah. for our world today? The project that China tried to do in starting in 2013 with the Belt and Road Initiative mostly meant in an economic sense, but hope arguably possibly that there's cultural interactions that come as a result of this more broadly economic collaboration between different countries. It was really trying to create greater wealth through being able to uh, bring into partnership different places and peoples. It's a continuity of the ancient Silk Road, in a sense. Yeah, like we spoke about earlier today, very much it can be called as the, the, the new Silk Road. Mm. As different countries have different national conditions, operate under different social, economic, and cultural contexts, and adopt different political systems, the Belt and Road Initiative has utilized Chinese classic ideas to highlight inclusiveness and mutual learning, which have a solid foundation in traditional Chinese culture. In today's world, we are facing many challenges, such as how to promote the exchanges between different cultures, how to channel the forces of different civilizations towards the end of building a harmonious and pluralistic world. The Chinese wisdom of harmony and diversity may help us build a more open and inclusive world to advance the progress of human civilization. Para naman sa pagsalubong sa bagong taon ng inspirasyon mula sa mensahe ng Pangulong Xi Jinping ng China para sa 2024, makinig sa panawagan ng mga kilalang personalidad mula sa akademiko, komersyal, politikal at diplomatikong hanay sa iba't ibang sulok ng mundo. Lahat ay nagkakaisa sa diwa ng pag-asam sa kapayapaan, pagsulong ng kaunlaran, pagpapalakas ng kooperasyon at pagtataguyod ng win-win na sitwasyon ngayong 2024. Ito ay isang taon ng pagkakaisa at sama-samang paghakbang patungo sa isang mas maginhawa at masaganang kinabukasan na para sa lahat. To me, I mean, young people today who weren't alive when I was first here probably have no concept, even in China, of how far China has come. It's been a remarkable transition, transformation of a nation, and it's happened so quickly. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. ま、of solar panels in the world and uh, I think close to 60% of wind 
wind power manufacturing capacity. So they're very dominant and there's very, very little that the West can do to compete. Subai Sindh mein ek hamari ilaka hai Tharka. Waha zara pasmanda ilaka hai. Sipek ki waja se jo kohle ki kaane hai waha se kohla bhi dreyaft ho raha hai. Aur kohle ko ab bijli mein tabdil kar rahe hai. Aur bijli jo hai pure national grid mein Pakistan ko ja rahi hai. Aur sabse badi baat hai ke jo waha ki khawateen hai jo apne gharon se sirf nikalti thi khana pakane ke liye ya bachon ke liye khayal karne ke liye उनकी कोई मुलाजमत नहीं थी अब वो डम्पर ट्रक्स चला रही हैं बड़े बड़े ट्रक वो चलाती हैं वो कोले को इस तरफ से उधर लेके आती हैं उनके पास आमदनी भी आ गई है उनके पास एतमाद भी आ गया है कि हम तो वाकई काम भी कर सकते हैं इतना बड़ा काम और जो मैं समझता हूँ बी आर का बी आर का गोल्डन डेकेड है सुनहरा दौर वो भी आ रहा है अगले दस सालों में इनशाला باید فرهنگ مفاهمه و مدارا توسعه پیدا بکنه هیچ تمدنی از دیگری برتر نیست در این حال تمدن ها چیزهای زیادی میتونن به هم دیگه یاد بدن خبین پیس امن فاجن دیولمت حتن خزو همکاری تاون کمین رابطه بارد بارد مشترکا مفادات وین وین Handa na ba kayo para sa isa pang nakakamanghang paglalakbay kasama ang ating paboritong vlogger na si Sisi? Sa part 2 ng kanyang video series, ililibot niya tayo sa kahali-hali ng bayan ng Wuchen sa China. Kaya naman, samahan natin si Sisi sa kanyang pagtuklas sa makasaysayang bayan na puno ng tradisyon at modernong kagandahan. Kumusta po mga kaibigan Pinoy? Ito po si Sisi! Sa nagkarang episode, sinubugan kong magsuot na hanfu o tradisyonal na kasuot ang Chino. At in-enjoy ang pagiging model o actress. Sa episode namang ito, itutuloy natin ang pamamasyal sa magagandang lugar ng bayang Uchen. Hitura ng mga bayan sa East China 1,000 years ago. Dito sa Uchen, baga mahanap ninyo ang sagot. Ang Uchen ay isang 1,300 years old na water tank sa ipapang bahagi ng Yangtze River, gawing silangan ng China. Mula nang may dadak noon 872 AD, hindi nagbago ang pangalan, lokasyon, taluyan ng tubig, pati paran ng pamumuhay ng mga tao rito. Bilang isang importanteng istasyon ng sinaunang Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal, dumaran sa Wuzhen ang canal at hinahadi ang bumbayan sa mga maliliit na isla. Kaya naman, tulay at pangga ang dalawang bagay na hindi magugulang sa Wuzhen. Ang bayan ay may pitumputalwang tulay. Ang bawat tulay ay mayroong sariling kwento. Halimbawa, ang tulay sa likod ko ay tinatawag na tingshan. Kung nakakarang kayo sa tulay na to na may bitbit parol o lantern sa panahon ng traditional Chinese New Year, magiging totoo raw ang hanga ninyo. At kahit merong na ngayon ipad ipang napakapilis at napakakinghawang sa sakyan na ujan, pangka pa rin ang baw na hinguri ng transportasyon para sa mga residente. Kinagamit ng mga taga ujan ang pangka sa paghahatin ng bigas, harina, material sa konstruksyon, transportasyon ng tao at maraming pangka. Ang bawat pamilya ay may sariling malit ng pandalan at kapag umulat. Dito pwede makita ang mga pangka. Bukos sa tulay at pangka, meron bang maraming interesanting lugar sa ujan. Ang mga handicraft flower ay pwedeng sumubok ng mga wax printing sa dye house na malapit sa Westgate. 
ang mga costume drama lover ay pwedeng pumisita sa Museo ng Pagkasaw ng Sinaunang China sa Timok Pampang. Ang mga shopping lover ay pwedeng mamasyal sa mga pasalubong shop sa kitna ng bayan. Ang mga animal lover ay pwedeng magpakain ng mga malalaking koi sa floating market. Teka, mundi kong malimudan na pagkasarating para ang mga merienda sa ujan. Ang bagong luto at umuusok pang black rice cake ay 40 pesos ang dalawang piraso. At may kasama pang glutinous rice at chuchu. Ang tingsha rice cake na parang blaklak ay nasa 20 pesos ang isang piraso. At meron itong roast jam sa loob. At ang pikunya cake naman, brown sugar ang kinagamit dito. Kaya naman madamis at malutong. So, lubikat ang mga decorations sa ulo ko. Mahirap. Mahirap ang mga actor actress. Okay. Gusto ka man tanggalin ang mga ito as soon as possible. Okay. Hanggang diyan na lang ang ating pamamasyal dito sa Uchan. Idong ni Sisi, Kida Kids, sa susunan na vlog. Bye-bye! Sa taong 2023, maraming dayuhan na nagkaroon ng isang kahangahang ng taon sa China. Kasabay na pag-unlad ng bansa, sila rin ay lumago at natuto. Sa pamamagitan ng kanila mga mata, masisilayan natin ang patuloy na pag-asenso at pagiging bukas ng China. Samahan natin at alamin ang mga karanasan ng limang dayuhan sa kanilang pamamalagi sa China sa nakaraang taon. Abangan ang kanilang mga kwento na makikipagsapalaran, pagtuklas at pagyakap sa kulturang Chino na tiyak magbibigay inspirasyon sa atin. Sekarang akhirnya impian aku terwujud, aku datang ke Hangzhou untuk sekolah. I am an artist from Africa. I will tell the beauty and the vitality of Africa. I have set a small goal for myself, hoping to earn two million US dollars. Hazis <laughs> hotlap at thas, as an ki hazis hotlap jin number chip sin khata bejya bejin. Travel Incorporated. The Chinese Embassy in the Philippines, FFCCCII and Manila Overseas Chinese Service Center jointly held the award ceremony for the Online Consular Protection Knowledge Competition. Chongguo主非大使馆联合举办线上领事保护知识竞赛颁奖礼由中国驻非大使馆联合飞华商联总会马尼拉华驻中心举办并龙网协办的线上领事保护知识有奖问答活动于十二月八日上午九时准时结束
这是中国大使馆第一次主持这样的竞赛活动。通过竞赛，让参赛者在遇到领事问题的情况下，可以应用相关常识予以处理。他也对商总华住中心在这次竞赛中给予充分和积极的配合，表示由衷感谢和高度肯定。这次比赛共有七十名优胜者得奖，其中头等奖二十名优胜者获得灵宝知识行家奖。二等奖二十名优胜者获得灵宝知识达人奖，三等奖三十名优胜者获得灵宝知识能手奖。当中由于有的住家遥远，所以只有其中十余位居住在附近一带的优胜者亲自前往领奖，或由代表带领。诸位得奖人分享各自的感想和心得，他们表示，这次的竞赛让他们受益良多。他们分享了他们在菲律宾的经历和生活点滴，希望类似的线上活动能够继续举办，让大家能够学习到更多相关常识。他们也通过大使馆的各种护侨活动，感受到祖国对海外侨民的关心。最后举办仪式简单而隆重的颁奖典礼，诸位优胜者分别上台领奖。非洲新闻台综合报道。The Philippine Yingling Foundation Incorporated held its Winter Ancestor Worship Ceremony. Feihua Yingling Hong Shi Jiazu Zonghui 举行癸卯冬季四祖大典仪式。为传承中华民族溯本追源、尊祖敬宗之精神，飞华英林洪氏家族总会历年来均于农历冬至节庆前夕，举行一年一度之冬季四祖大典。二零二三年十二月十七日上午九时，该会于会所六楼组厅隆重举行癸卯年冬季四祖大典，并与出席之各乡领导及该会里监事同仁祭祖员联欢。本年度冬季祭祖仪式由理事长孔祖江亲临主祭，执行副理事长孔垂烟、副理事长孔文炳、孔维谋、孔天亮。永远名誉理事长洪我景、洪宇柏、洪建全，以及多位名誉理事长、副监事长，所属各乡会理事长及该会理监事职员等共同陪祭。该会癸卯年冬季四祖大典遵循古礼，依照中华民族之传统礼仪进行，场面庄重又严肃，气氛温馨。上午九时正，在司仪洪武一秘书长的宣布下。该会癸卯年冬季四祖大典正式拉开帷幕，在主祭理事长洪祖江的率领下，朱一孙燕次排列，礼仪上香，壮无足威而敢祖则流长，虔诚供奉而绵烈祖圆梦，全体一孙跪拜吴英林洪氏开山始祖十四朝奉公，齐诵祖德宗公，祈求国泰民安，四季吉祥。阖家安康，生意兴隆，万事顺顺利利。中午十二时，该会于会所五楼祖营纪念堂设宴招待出席之全体礼监事同仁及族亲，族员们促膝谈心，闲话家常，共同分享一年来之心得，气氛热闹又温馨。理事长洪祖江并购置了一大批精美之圣诞礼物篮。分别赠送于出席之每一位领监事及族员。非洲新闻台综合报道。The Philippine Yingling Foundation in cooperation held a ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate the completion of the renovation of the association building. 飞华英林洪氏家族总会隆重举行会所重新装修、落成剪彩祝福典礼。二零二三年十二月十七日上午十时，飞华英林洪氏家族总会在该会会所楼下大门口、三楼会议厅及五楼祖营纪念堂门口，隆重举行会所重新装修、落成剪彩仪式。在秘书长洪武一的主持下，该会会所重新装修、落成剪彩仪式首先在楼下大门口隆重举行。
，剪彩仪式由理事长洪祖江主剪，永远名誉理事长洪我锦，永远名誉理事长洪宇柏，永远名誉理事长洪建全，名誉理事长洪兆等，名誉理事长洪兆坚，名誉理事长洪汉宁，名誉理事长洪世维，执行副理事长洪纯烟，大厦主任洪纯发，副理事长洪文炳，名誉理事长洪良鹏，名誉理事长洪文雅，名誉理事长洪其仁，名誉理事长洪建。熊，名誉理事长洪余德，名誉理事长洪联合，名誉理事长洪培力，副理事长洪维谋，副理事长洪天亮等陪剪。随后，三楼会议室重新装修，落成剪彩。同样由理事长洪祖江主剪，永远名誉理事长洪我景，永远名誉理事长洪余柏，永远名誉理事长洪建全，名誉理事长洪兆等，名誉理事长洪兆坚，名誉理事长洪良鹏，名誉理事长洪文雅，名誉理事长洪元生，副监事长洪兆雄，足贤洪聪晓，秘书长洪武一，外交主任洪清泉，文教主任洪天排，建设主任洪祖湖，培青主任洪天长等陪剪。紧接着，为五楼祖营纪念堂落成举行剪彩，由永远名誉理事长、前众议员洪余柏及前众议员乃达、洪炳贤、抗力主剪，理事长洪祖江及名誉理事长洪兆坚陪剪。随后，邀请名士、著名神父为该会会所每一楼进行祝福仪式，并于中午举行李监事族员联欢大会。理事长洪祖江在致辞中表示，这一次的会所重新装修及募集教育基金，得到了该会多达七八十位李监事及足贤的大力支持，慷慨解囊。他向各位凯捐巨资者表示再三的感谢，同时也希望各位李监事同仁再接再厉，为家族总会之美好将来共同努力，再创辉煌。菲律宾六桂堂宗亲总会理事长洪元吉在致辞中表示，飞华英灵洪氏家族总会会所落成及筹募教育基金成绩斐然，显示出英灵洪氏家族总会全体李监事族亲精诚团结，不分彼此。相信在理事长洪祖江坚强有力的领导下，会务必定欣欣向荣，再上一层楼。接下来由该会正副理事长向凯捐会所装修。及增添教育基金之诸位热心理监事，祭足贤颁赠感谢盾牌。The Manila Chinatown Barangay Organization, in cooperation with various associations in the Filipino Chinese community, held a Christmas gift gifting activity at the Plaza Lorenzo Ruiz. Manila Chinatown 二零二三年十二月二十二日下午两点，马尼拉华人区苗龙牙协会联合非华社会主要团体，在华人区明洛伦花园口举办圣诞祭品慈善活动，向临近尼洛伦和仙尼圭拉市两区所辖三十四个苗龙牙的平民分发合计七千包五公斤装大米和其他礼品，期待他们能够欢度一个幸福快乐的圣诞节。同时，让他们感受到来自华社同胞的关心和问候。此次活动得到刘皇丽珍慈善基金会、飞华商联总会、飞华各界联合会、菲律宾中国商会、飞华新联工会、飞华工商总会、旅飞各校友会联合会、旅飞华侨工商联总会、菲律宾福建总商会、菲律宾中国红门竹林协议总团。菲律宾福建青年联合总商会、国际华侨华人青商丝路交流协会、菲律宾厦门联谊会等华社社团及个人的支持。当天下午，花园口广场人山人海，大批民警和苗龙牙职员到场协助维持秩序。马尼拉市长拉库纳、副市长涅托也到现场向民众送上圣诞祝福，并向热心社团表达感谢。
马尼拉华人区苗龙牙协会主席刘少强，还向所有捐赠此次活动的社团颁发感谢状。非洲新闻台综合报道。The Philippine Yingling Foundation Incorporated held a Christmas charity event at the San Nicolas District. Feihua Yingling Hongshi Jiazhu Zonghui in San Nicolas District held a Christmas charity event at the San Nicolas District. 甲座西尼圭拉市区夏文里洛市街，举行本年度圣诞祭品活动，汇集该区六个苗龙牙，共计两千个家庭，为该区贫苦的非人群众带来了圣诞节日的温暖。是日，分发的每份圣诞礼物，包括十六公升塑料水桶一只，大米二公斤，意大利面一公斤及调味料一罐，米粉一包，罐头若干以及香皂两块等。出席参加市日祭品活动的该会领导及李监事族亲友，永远名誉理事长孔宇柏、前众议员乃达红饼、名誉理事长孔兆坚、名誉理事长孔培立、名誉理事长孔世维、理事长孔祖江、执行副理事长孔纯烟、副理事长孔文炳、副理事长孔维谋、副理事长孔天亮、监事长孔元吉。副监事长、秘书长孔武一，以及多位热心理监事同仁及族亲等。同时，是日之祭品活动，更应该感谢该会诸位热心的理监事同仁及族内贤达，在理事长孔祖江的带头发起下，踊跃捐书，共有三十六位热心族贤慷慨解囊，共襄一举。非洲新闻台综合报道。The Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association held its 2023 Christmas party. Philippine Zhongzheng University Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association held its 2023 Christmas party. Philippine Zhongzheng University Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association held its 2023 Christmas party. Philippine Zhongzheng University Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association held its 2023 Christmas party. Philippine Zhongzheng University Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association held its 2023 Christmas party. Philippine Zhongzheng University Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association held its 2023 Christmas party. Philippine Zhongzheng University Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association held its 2023 Christmas party. 大约一百多人踊跃参与，每位校友头上都戴上圣诞装饰品，现场洋溢着一片喜悦的气氛，热闹非凡。出席者包括总会指导员、某校执行副董事长郭淑元、副董事长许俊荣、院长叶启明博士、前副院长伊美丽、常务咨询委员曾国荣、曾国祥、郭冰莹、施志雄、名誉会长陈建卫。咨询委员叶来成、曾金成、蔡怀强、庄国乐、许玉义，执行委员及配偶、母校各部门主管、志愿老师、校友等，大家欢聚一堂，同庆佳节。联欢会上的每位佳肴，由会长李景思、副会长陈当当、施纯勇、施玉娥和蔡清柱等盛情款待。晚会由秘书长何其颖担任司仪，学艺组主任林艳艳和副主任洪玉坤共同主持。李锦思会长在致欢迎词时，感谢大家拨拢参加联欢会。他希望各位校友能够继续促进跟学校的互助及交流，加强校友间的情谊，并支持学校及总会各项方案和活动。期待全体委员在新的一年里再接再厉，精诚团结，为总会未来更美好的发展做出积极的努力和贡献。联欢会中，郭冰莹董事向母校捐赠地震监测装置器，曾国祥董事向母校全生培幼儿纪念馆捐献飞币一千五百万元。社工组主任施辉婷向母校赠送三幅价值非凡的菲律宾名画，资深辅导委员、菲律宾杰出水彩画家杨胜利向总会赠送他五十年前参加菲律宾美术总会黑与白比赛荣获首奖的亲笔水彩画。
，公关组主任杨书宝向母校全生培幼儿纪念馆捐献飞笔三百万元。捐赠仪式后，联欢会进入娱新节目的环节，活动节目繁多，精彩缤纷，有歌舞表演、布置圣诞树比赛、多人冰果游戏，还有幸运大抽奖。该会与委员们 Spicy Girls 为大家带来精彩的歌舞表演。会长李景思、校长叶启明和常务咨询委员施志雄即兴参与集体翩翩起舞，将全场推向了高潮。联欢会于晚上十一时圆满落幕。非洲新闻台综合报道。The Bureau of Immigration will process the 2024 annual report in designated locations. Immigration Ministry will designate the location of the Ikea Hotel for the Ikea Hotel. Immigration Ministry will designate the location of the Ikea Hotel for the Ikea Hotel. Immigration Ministry will designate the location of the Ikea Hotel for the Ikea Hotel. Immigration Ministry will designate the location of the Ikea Hotel for the Ikea Hotel. Immigration Ministry will designate the location of the Ikea Hotel for the Ikea Hotel. Immigration Ministry will designate the location of the Ikea Hotel for the Ikea Hotel. 申请者需本身亲往办理，年龄六十岁或以上年长外侨，十四岁或以下儿童、病患、孕妇和残障人士，可由代表代办，但需出示特别授权公证书、医生证明或残障者证明书。大明区地点安排在民事 Armida 区的 Robinson 商场三楼美食广场附近。以及巴西市的 S M World of Asia 商场等移民局指定地点办理，办理时间每星期一至星期五上午九点至下午六点，假日除外。居住外省人士可在各当地移民局办事处办理。办理常年报道外侨应先在网上提前登记，上网登记者请输入英文姓名、出生日期、住家地址、苗龙牙区号。邮编号码、ACR I 卡号码、签证类别、护照号码及签发日期和有效期、电子邮箱等资料。登记完毕后，在网上拿取编号，然后带往商场进行报道。办理常年报道必须携带 I 卡原件、有效护照原件，以及常年报道费用非币三百一十元。与往年不同的是。今年可通过视频进行常年报道，申请者应先在网上提前登记，登记成功后可以选择日期和时间，然后将在电子邮件收到一份通知书和访问链接，再应用 Google Meet 软件与移民局人员在网上进行常年报道访问。网上视频期间也必须出示有效期护照原件和 ACR I 卡原件。访问成功后，申请者需于二十四小时内通过线上付款。如果未能在规定时间内办理常年报道，将被从三月一号起算起，每月罚款两百皮索，每年最高罚款两千皮索。China Town News 非中新闻台综合报道。有利东方旅游有限公司 Union Travel Incorporated. It is my pleasure to introduce myself once more as your host, Isa Chong. Thank you for tuning in, and I sincerely hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Be sure to catch the next episode of Chinatown TV next week for more exciting content.